This is the first video in a series designed to help you understand the tech stack of Secret Network. Even if you don't have a background in coding Rust smart contracts or a degree in something fancy, this video, I hope, will be the most understandable explanation of blockchain that you've ever heard in order to lay a foundation for how Secret is different. So blockchain is the base layer of technology that makes Web3 possible, like wheels or jets or bricks it makes some things possible that weren't possible before. And one of the things that blockchain makes possible is decentralized applications with use cases ranging from finance to gaming to NFTs, art, media. You might have heard a standalone blockchain is often called an L1. And L1s can be built upon by other applications or protocols, and that would make that application an L2. Cosmos, or the token traded as Atom, is in L1, but with a vision to create an ecosystem of interoperable chains. And Cosmos has been around for a while and definitely done that. Uh, Secret is one of the chains in the Cosmos family. And Secret could be described as a sovereign L1 chain in the Cosmos ecosystem built with the Cosmos software development kit, commonly referred to as the Cosmos SDK. So what does a blockchain do? A blockchain is a replicating state machine. And it's helpful here to actually think about a chain with links in it. Every block or piece of chain represents the state of the chain that encapsulates all of the relevant data from a particular point in time. It's like a, a snapshot or a photograph of the chain almost. Let's say, for example, that I want to send you 10 secret because you seem like a nice person. So that amount will go from my wallet to your wallet. And the data associated with that transaction has to be approved by the chain or it will not go through. So transactional data and other metadata, these, these are captured, snapshotted, and represented in a validated block of the chain, a sealed link in the chain, if you will. What's powerful about blockchain, though, is that this data doesn't just live in one place. Rather, it's decentralized and it's distributed into a network. This is in stark contrast, of course, to the centralized data management that characterizes Web2, where there is often a single point of failure, a giant room full of servers, or a, a single place that could be hacked where all data lives. I saw in the news just this week that the world's largest password manager was hacked. So there's a problem with centralizing data. What Web3 and, and blockchain makes possible though is this idea often described as a distributed ledger. And this ledger, this data, it lives in a network made up of individual nodes which are decentralized, spread out throughout the entire globe. The distributed ledger model that blockchain makes possible is powerful because each node agrees about what has taken place. This process of agreement is called consensus. In order to produce a block, or think of it just as maybe welding shut the next link in the chain, these nodes must be able to validate that block. To say that they agree and are in consensus about the data associated with what has taken place on, on the state of the chain at that particular point in time. And based on their programming, different chains achieve consensus differently. Just to name a few of the key mechanisms that you may have heard of, there's proof of work. Bitcoin is proof of work. There's proof of history, proof of relay, proof of authority, proof of stake, or delegated proof of stake. On many chains, there is 51% consensus required in order to produce a block. So if the nodes are voting in a sort of sense about the data associated with the state of the chain at any particular point, 51% consensus would have to be achieved in order to produce that block, to seal off the link and say, yes, this is accurate state of the chain. But let's say that there is a bad actor who wants to lie about the state of the chain for their own nefarious purposes, for their own gain. They want to say, perhaps wallet, 0xyz sent me all of its content. Now, in order to accomplish that lie, with data and have it represented on the chain, they would have to have 51% of the nodes agree and validate the block that contained that false data. That's a, a difficult accomplishment, especially when you're talking about a protocol that might be worth $2 billion. So if the chain somehow had nodes at a 50-50 split in consensus, then the chain would actually temporarily halt and stop producing blocks until consensus was achieved. Since Secret is built with Cosmos SDK, it uses Tendermint consensus mechanism, which is known as the Byzantine Fault Tolerance, or BFT. And BFT trades increased security on-chain for something called live 
effectiveness. Essentially, the 66% consensus required is great for security. The only downside is that it has a lower threshold necessary to halt the chain. Since 34% of nodes, if they're out of agreement, the chain will halt. Now, secret is a delegated proof of stake chain, or you might see that as DPoS. What that means is that people who hold secret can lock up their tokens in exchange for staking reward. And to the user, this is known as staking. But the benefit it brings to the chain is best understood through the word delegation. Nodes that have the highest delegation, that is the most user secret that is locked up and attached to that node, these nodes are part of the active set and they have the opportunity to validate blocks. For the users who are staking, they have the opportunity to earn yield or earn additional secret rewards on top of the secret that they've attached to that validator. So that's the basics of blockchain, and it's a great start for everything we're gonna dig into with the secret network tech stack.